I'm Alex, and this is the African Wilderness. I'm here to teach you a thing or two about Africa and its wilderness. And we, or I, but we as in me and the cameraman, we are the snake seekers. Snake seekers. Snake seekers. This right here, this is what we call a Galapagos ditch. Now, you may have seen at zoos and such, there's those rhinos, they tend to have rhinos, but more than a few of them tend to have the tip of their horn kind of flattened. For whatever reason, it's just flattened. And the reason is, over time, when their horn grows, it grows flat because it's growing out of a wide base. So these ditches are formed when rhinos will actually walk up to them and kind of scrape their horns forward in a way of, it's kind of like trying to sharpen a knife. And it makes the tip of their horn really sharp by just scraping through these, these, these paths. Pretty neat. These hills in Africa, they are some of the steepest hills you will find, hills everywhere. It's pretty ridiculous, but you know, when you're out in the wilderness, if you're a snake seeker like me, snake seeker, seeker, snake seeker, you have to climb these hills because everybody knows that snakes live on the tops of hills. Oh, crap. Pretty intense. Oh. God, it sucks to hold a camera while climbing a hill. What we have here is the African Dewhopper. It's quite an exciting name, and it describes exactly how it lives. It hops from dewdrop to dewdrop, drinking. Except for right now, I think it's just here right now because, because it's Africa. And uh, where else is it gonna be? So let's see if I can pick him up. Okay. All right, I don't know where he went. Oh, there he is. All right. Now, the interesting thing about the African dewdropper is they also know how to fly. Um, you can see these things traveling in, uh, in packs of 10 to 20 and uh, sometimes they have a tendency to fly for up to three miles because they can smell dew for up to five and so they'll they'll fly for about three but then they get tired and if they don't find dew within the three miles they die so uh, sometimes the local villagers who are nice enough um, they'll actually bring them dew from the mountains, and that's actually where they came up with the name Mountain Dew. Because as you can see, it lives up here in the, in the African mountains. It's pretty intense. We just saw a lizard. It was, a, uh, it was an African horn lizard. Everything here is named African because it's from Africa. Why does it smell like waffle crisp up here? I really like waffle crisp. I wonder if that's what they eat up here. It must be a waffle crisp stash. Never really known where they make waffle crisp, but I would not be surprised if they made it here. Oh, look at this. This right here, this, this is an African arrowhead. Now the Africans, they migrate in tribes. And it's, for some reason, just based on how many of these they make, because they make a lot of these suckers, we'll probably find a bunch of them. But they make so many of them that they actually find it easier. Instead of bringing them everywhere with them, once they've hunted in the area, they just abandon all of them and then they make new ones in their next hunting area because it's just a lot easier for them to make new ones out of the rocks they find instead of carrying a whole bunch of African arrowheads. African arrowhead. You could probably find one if you came to Africa. Okay, so we may or may not have found our first snake. So I'm gonna try to catch that sucker. Now when you're trying to catch a snake, you gotta be really careful. 
Always hold this thing facing away from you, not towards you, because you don't want to catch yourself instead. You got plenty of belt loops. Man, this thing snags. Now you caught yourself, now you gotta let yourself go. I don't even want to think about that. Make sure you go for the pointy end of the snake, not the long, skinny end, because the pointy end is the dangerous one. Pick it up. You hold it by the back. The pointy end's up front. Oh wow, a little lizard. Right there. Oh, he disappeared. I don't know where he went. Anyway, this may not look like a snake to you, but we call this the African stick snake. And the reason is, it's got the three ends. They are dangerous. You don't want to get your arm caught in one of those. But uh, this thing, as you can see, the front of these three ends is kind of fuzzy. And uh, you touch that stuff and man, you're poisoned. So I'm gonna let this guy go. And uh, I'm gonna put him right back where I found him. Make his life a little bit easier. All right, Afghan uh, Oh, and check it out. Look at another African arrowhead. Who would have thought, huh? They're everywhere. Oh look, there's a native. Check it out. You can see them moving back and forth. Now when they move back and forth, that is their mating dance. Unfortunately, he is a youth, and he is probably not gonna find anyone because he's, well, he does have a good chance because he's slightly overweight, which is a very rare occurrence here in Africa. And so he actually may have a good chance of finding someone who is, uh, you know, they'll, they'll think he has food and they won't have to do that stupid dance. So this right here is a African meerkat dung. A poo, scat, whatever you want to call it. But it belongs specifically to the, uh, the African meerkat. Now, sometimes they poo out here just because, you know, they're pooing. Sometimes they poo out here specifically to warn other predators of its, uh, of its existence. Because when you think of a meerkat, you think of just, you know, one of those little tiny meerkats hopping around, whatever. But an African meerkat is a lot bigger. You can see how big this single piece of poo is. Um, it has some trace elements of uh, what appears to be fuzz, which could be from a feather, it could be from a uh, a rat, a rabbit even. Um, so, I mean, you really gotta worry about these things. I personally don't have to worry about meerkats because I am not seeking meerkats. I'm a snake seeker. And so meerkats just, uh, they don't apply. They don't have to worry about them. Now this, this is the hole of an African tree worm. Now the interesting thing about the African tree worm is first of all, it is called a tree worm and it neither resembles nor resides in a tree. So, the African tree worm has a tendency to crawl down there and burrow. Now when it burrows, it tends to sleep there for at least a week or more. So if we're lucky, we may find ourselves an African tree worm. Okay, so. I've, uh, I've dug up this nice little hole here, as you can see, and uh, I did not find an African tree worm, but there is, there are some lizards that tend to be running in and out of that thing. They're all real tiny. You might be able to see one if you come up right here. I see his head poking out. He's right there, tiny little lizard right in front of my stick. He's on the, he's on the floor of that thing. And, uh, now these these little uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it African something lizard African. I know I know it has the word African in it I think it's African stock lizard or something like that and the reason is that it's called the African stock lizard is because these things are freaking everywhere they stock all the other animals they live in all the other animals' home so fortunately he won't stalk us but 
we might be able to get him to kind of pop out of there. Yeah, there we go. Now these guys start off pretty small, but these African stock lizards, they can grow to about six feet long in their fullest length. Now, keep in mind, their fullest length is only achieved after about eight years of being alive, and these things have a tendency to only have a lifespan of about five years. And in that first five years, they only grow to about half a foot long at most. Okay, now this, this here is an African horn lizard. Now, you might think that, hey, what are you talking about? This is the African stock lizard. But what you have to realize is that the African horn lizard and the African stock lizard are actually very, very similar. Now, the only way you can tell them apart is because by bringing this stick close to him that I have in my hands, he will get scared a lot faster than the other one did. <laughs> Shit. Ah, Africa. Isn't it great? Yeah, they may be uh, a little late in the times, a little bit of a rundown country, not very modern. But, uh, I mean, really, it is such a beautiful place. So what we have here is the African rock snake egg, African rock boa, viper, pit viper, rock, African, African rock viper boa, egg. Anyway, now this egg here, they only lay one egg at a time. I mean, if they laid two eggs at a time, then that would feel really uncomfortable. But they lay one egg in one spot at one time, and uh, the African people they really believe in the African rock egg. You know, they see it as a, uh, they see it as a very sacred egg because, you know, it's really hard to find these African rock vipers. And uh, as a result, sure enough, they leave their arrowheads to protect these eggs. God damn, these things are everywhere. Now, the African rock egg is very, very blue as you can see and the reason is blue like the color of the sky it's it's uh it, it helps keep it warm during the daytime red doesn't help keep it warm so uh so it's blue it's not white because white would stand out too much but blue is just the perfect color because it matches the sky so it blends in with the environment now these things are very sensitive any movement by an animal walking by any uh any rain on the egg which they're lucky because it doesn't rain much in Africa. Anything that disturbs the egg could kill the baby inside and that egg might never ever hatch. So uh, I think we're going to bring it to the lab for some research. <sighs> Sounds like there's something in there. Definitely taking this with us. All right, now here's a fun part. What we have found here is the entrance to an African pond. Now, this might not look like it could be a pond to you, but, uh, but let me just show you. I'm gonna take you deep inside the African pond. We're gonna get right in there. Let's go. So this, this is the African pond. It's the African tree pond to be specific because it's inside of that tree that we were looking at. It is a very interesting pond indeed. Now if you look closely, there's actually African tree tadpoles. Now the interesting thing is they only grow in trees. So here's one of the African tree tadpoles. Now the interesting thing about these guys is they will actually turn into, oh there's another one. These guys will actually go what is called metamorphosis, 
it is a uh, see that one with the legs it turns out they actually lose these legs as they get older and they eventually turn into the African stick snake and uh, that is a very unique thing about the, the snake is that it comes out of the water sometimes it is born with four legs usually just two and that head will that that tail kind of sticking off of the head right there will eventually get longer and it will it will turn into more of a tree shape or a, a stick shape I'm gonna try to catch one of these guys Well, we had some fun with those tadpoles, but uh, the real fun is out there. And that is an African pond. So this, this may look like ordinary feces to you, but let me assure you, this is not ordinary feces. This is the, uh, the eggs of the African rock shotter. Now the African rock shotter is a very interesting creature. They lay these eggs, and it's very weird because when you see them, you know that there's one around because they guard their eggs very dangerously. But uh, I, I mean, you don't see them and just out of nowhere, when you get close to their eggs, bam, you get rocks thrown at you. So out of nowhere, oh, the African rock shotter. Oh, and it's throwing arrowhead. They're everywhere! I swear these things! Get out of here! Alright, so that's our show. Join me next time with another episode of In the Wild, Snake Seekers, Africa Edition. Do you have any idea where we're going? We're in the middle of Africa and we didn't bring a map. Holy shit. I have no idea. I mean, I don't want to go all the way back there. That would be boring. If we went, if we went the complete opposite direction to get back, be so boring. <laughs>